Hey Siri, what's the weather? It's currently partly cloudy and 21 degrees. Expect mostly cloudy skies starting in the morning. Today's high will be 27 degrees and the low will be 21. Dude, that's cold. So we want to stay in the studio as much as possible today, but we got to do something very, very special. We got to pick up a guitar. Now you might say, you already have a guitar. What do you need another one for? Well, this is actually to replace one I had some issues with from the manufacturer. So I went through the warranty to reimburse me for it. And now I got to go pick out a new guitar. You may have seen it before in my videos. It's my acoustic electric guitar, but you haven't seen it in the previous videos because it was broken. Now we're going to pick up a new one. Yeah, hopefully we'll make some beats with it too. Let's hurry because it's cold. Man, there's nothing like listening to a song that you just think you finished and uh, listening to it in the car <laughs> and actually feeling great about it. I've been walking down this road before and now I know I don't need someone who's by my side, that's just for sure. This is the newest member of my guitar family. It is a Taylor 214 series. It's got the Koa back and sides laminate with the solid wood top. It's just a beautiful guitar and I'm excited to make music with it. The humidifier doesn't arrive for two days, so this baby is staying inside of the case for a couple of days until I get what I need. Coming soon. So today we're gonna talk about mastering and an easy and simple way to do it inside of Logic. I'm gonna walk you through the entire process, but I'm also going to leave a link in the description to my mastering chain, which I've been perfecting over the last few months. And uh, I have found that it works really, really well for all the type of music that you've been seeing on this channel. So if you're into like pop, R&B, hip hop, this is a great mastering chain for you. It might be pretty close to one and done. Of course, something to always keep in mind, I've made these parameters based off of having a mix that peaks at around negative six dB. So you wanna make sure that your mix is at around negative six dB before you start messing with this mastering chain. But don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through it so that you can do it yourself here for your project and really understand what elements are important throughout the mastering process. But if you're just looking for a preset, the link's in the description. Let's jump into it, shall we? Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna show you a before and after, and I'm gonna do it with some gain compensation so that you don't get thrown off based off of like, the mix is at negative 6 dB and the master is, you know, as loud as possible. So, with some gain matching, this is the before and after. Take it to your mama, I don't need the drama. What you'll notice is that even though this was gain matched, you f it feels like the mastered version is louder. And that's because we have more of what's called perceived loudness. So it's not just looking at your meters, it's messing with the frequencies to help it be perceived as louder. So it's gonna feel louder because you can hear more of the different frequencies within the spectrum versus it just being like turning the volume up. Most of the plugins on this mastering chain are stock plugins, but there are like two or three plugins that are not stock, but most people have these. So hopefully you have this. If not, you know what you wanna get to achieve this exact effect, or you know at least least what to do to get there. So the first thing I do here with an EQ is I roll off the low end. Anything kind of lower than 30 hertz, I roll off uh, just on a, a little slope here, just because we don't really need that information. And it just kind of secures that, you know, usually in the mixing process, I've taken care of those frequencies, but just in case I've put another one 
here in the EQ for the mastering chain. And then what I'm doing here is actually working on the perceived loudness. So a lot of what happens in a lot of mixes is that in order to make it feel a little bit louder, we actually boost some of the mid range frequencies. Uh, because usually we've got the bass where we want it, we've got the high end where we want it, and we've got the crispy vocals, but the mid range is kind of where a lot of people sleep on. So what I like to do in my masters is I add a dynamic compressor to some of the mid range frequencies. So here around 320 hertz and around 730. This doesn't have to be exactly here. Obviously, you're gonna wanna listen to your mix and see where it sounds best. But you're gonna find frequencies where you feel like it has a lot of information. You're gonna boost it a little bit and also make it a dynamic EQ where you have some dynamic compression happening in between. So uh, with nothing else on the mastering chain except for this, I'll show you a before and after. Let me just go to the hook here. Take it to your mama, I don't need the drama. have a little bit more of that meatiness in the middle, a little bit more control because of the dynamic EQ. And that's why I'm using the Pro Q3 uh, rather than just this regular EQ, because yes, you can boost those frequencies, but it's important to also kind of keep them in check with some compression. So that's why I really like and recommend this plugin from FabFilter. So once you got the EQ, I like to do some saturation. The saturation plugin here that I'm using is Saturn 2. I've talked about it in previous videos, specifically for my vocals, but this is what I've done for the actual master mix. So I have it on the warm tape and I've boosted the lower band a little bit, just 1.15 dB and about 2.8 on the higher frequencies. Take it to your mama, I don't need the drama She can take care of you Take it to your mama, I don't need the drama She can take care of you it already sounds a little bit crispier. You can hear everything a little bit better and it almost sounds a little bit louder too. And it's because you're boosting those harmonics in those frequencies, which is what saturation is doing. So a uh, huge fan of this. I use it not just on my masters, but also on my vocals and a lot of other things. So uh, if you don't have this one from FabFilter, I'd highly recommend it. Also, FabFilter is not sponsoring this at all. I just like their plugins. The next thing we got on here is a basic multi-presser. Now, because we've added some harmonics and we've boosted some frequencies, I like to just make sure that everything is kind of in check. And this is what I've got going on. And this is the stock multi-band multi compressor inside of Logic. Take it to your mama. I don't need the drama. She can take care of you. Take it to your mama. I don't need the drama. You can see there's just a little bit of control happening on these different frequency bands. Um, I've moved them to these specific ranges just because I wanted more control over them. And you'll notice here that when they actually, I look at the kind of the peaks on these bars and set the uh, threshold and attack and release to, to do that. So, so far we've got some EQ and dynamic EQ, some saturation and a multi-band compressor. Super simple, but we've already done the dirty work. Now, uh, what I like to do is add some stereo imaging. I've done this with the Waves S1 Imager just to kind of add some width, some stereo width, but you can also do this with the stock uh, stereo imager inside of Logic. Um, so this is what it sounds like before. Take it to your mama, I don't need the drama, she can take care of you. Take it to your mama, I don't need the drama, she can take care of you. A lot of people get carried away with the stereo imaging in the mastering uh, when you're a beginner. Do not do that. A little bit goes a long way. You're going to start getting like weird phasing issues and it's just going to lose the meat of the production if you go a little too stereo. So you'll notice I just bumped it up a little bit here. If I wanted to do this with the stock stereo imager inside of Logic, it would look something like this. So go over to imaging, stereo spread. Um, and what I do here is I actually lower these and lower these and actually make the stereo live in those higher frequencies and not really interact with the lower frequencies here because that's, you know, you want your bass to really be mono through both of your speakers. You don't want to get them too stereo because then you lose kind of the punch and the kick and the power behind them. So you just want to kind of mess with these frequencies 
They don't necessarily have to be higher. I mean, you can kind of take a look and listen to your song, but it would look something like this. I would spread it and not be like super extreme like this. I'd actually make it really short and simple. Um, and make sure you're only focusing on the higher frequencies. The next plugin on this chain is something that a lot of people don't know about. This is a stock plugin inside of Logic. You can find it uh, by going to multi effects and then fat effects. And this is like an awesome mastering tool. Now, some of the things inside of this plugin, I'm already covering with my EQ, my saturation plugin, my multiband compressor. So some of these things I have turned off, but you'll notice the things that I have on is I have a little bit of bass enhancer and I have it on the warm setting and just bumped it up a little bit, 3.3%, super, super subtle. Now, the most important piece that I'm using here is the compressor. Uh, I have the compressor turned on. I have it on the vintage VCA. Left this kind of to just like the default. Um, and then what you wanna make sure is that this is set to hard clipping. Because what happens is if you do soft limiting on a big production, you're gonna sometimes experience some pumping and you don't want pumping on your overall sound. You wanna make sure it's just totally cutting off and clipping any frequencies over that for the limiter. So um, I have my input set to zero dB because I don't want anything to go over that. And basically I'm just making sure that nothing is actually clipping as in past that mark on the meter. Now, if you don't have a saturation plugin, you can actually add distortion here, turn this on and just kind of add a little bit of it to taste. Um, but yeah, mess around with this entire plugin because there are a lot of things you can do in this one plugin. And um, yeah, don't sleep on it. It's a good one to experiment with. Take it to your mama. I don't need the drama. She can take care of you. Take it to your mama. I don't need the drama. She can take care of you. Before I add the actual limiter and do the gain compensation, this is the last plugin that I put on my chain. It is I Am Pusher, uh, Infected Mushroom Pusher by Waves. I've talked about this in a previous tutorial, so I'll leave a link to it here so that you can check it out more in depth. Take it to your mama, I don't need the drama. She can take care of you. Take it to your mama, I don't need the drama. She can take care of you. It just adds a little bit more of a polished sound and brings out some of the frequencies we want. So I've messed a little bit with the magic knob, a tiny bit with the stereo imaging, some of the low end, just a little bit, and then a tiny bit of the body. And that's it. That's all I've touched on this. Uh, again, you can customize this to, you know, use your ears, listen to your music and see what it needs and how this can help it. That's the last thing I do before I do anything regarding volume compensation. It's throughout this entire process, I'm actually at the bottom of my chain I have all of my metering plugins and the reason why I have these is so that I can keep a close eye on what is going on with my mix so these are the three that I like to have this one kind of just lets you know what's going on with your frequencies it lets you know your true peak meters so that you make sure that you're actually not clipping with your with your audio and then it actually has your luffs but I also like to have the full luffs meter right here so um which if you wanna know more information about the Luffs meter, uh, I have a separate video that talks about how to get your master loud enough, and I'll leave a link to that here. But basically what you want is to be somewhere around the negative nine range. Um, and with that, you'll have enough loudness to cover you for all of the different streaming platforms. Each streaming platform has a different standard. Once you deliver your music to those stores, they will actually uh, process your audio file to match their loudness level. And they do that just to maintain consistency with the loudness of all of the things that play on their platform. You know, Spotify adheres to a different standard than Apple Music, than Google Play, than all of these other streaming platforms. But you'll be in a safe spot if you aim for negative negative nine, it will be ready for all of the different platforms. I have these at the end of the chain. These are not altering my sound at all. These are just metering plugins. So they're a way to visualize what's happening with your mix. So before I add an, a limiter to increase the volume and the loudness of the mix, I'm just gonna show you what it looks like as these are pumping through. Take it to your mama, I don't need the drama. She can take care of you. I don't want your product, you know that's not why I came through. 
Okay, so some of the things you noticed here, I'm within the bands that I want here. I want this to be a bass heavy song, so that's what I've chosen here. And it gives me the ranges it should be living in. Uh, and it looks like it's pretty well balanced based off of what I'm looking for. However, if you look at the luffs and the loudness here, they are all kind of more around this negative 16, negative 17 range. And that tells you here with the integrated amount. Um, we did also notice that here in the true peak meter, we're not actually peaking at zero, which is good. That means we're not in the red. Um, now what we need to do is just pull up a limiter and boost up the volume to make this work. Now, what I do is I use the adapted limiter inside of Logic and I set the out ceiling to be negative 0.1 dB. I do this just in case anything might go right at zero. I don't want any added distortion or sound with it being like clipped. Um, so I like to set it at at least negative 0.1 dB. You can do anything between like negative 0.1 or 0.5, but I like 0.1 because I, I like it to be as loud as possible. And then I let the I let it do the optimal look ahead time, which is 20 milliseconds. And then this is the knob that you actually mess around with. So right now I landed on 9.6 to be the number that I need for it to be at the loudness that I'd like. Um, but you can mess with this and, and that's all you do to get the loudness. So uh, let me show you what it sounds like now with the 9.6 dB added in gain. And take a look at these luffs and the peak, the true peak meter um, so that you can see that it's actually loud enough without it going in the red. Take it to your mama, I don't need the drama She can take care of you I don't want your product, you know that's not why I came through For you A couple things here, we noticed that our true peak meter is just below zero Which is where we want it, and that's because we put this to be negative 0.1 dB So it's just below the zero, it's not clipping, it's not adding any unwanted distortion or noise And then you'll notice here that our integrated amount is negative 8.9 and 9, somewhere around there. Uh, and you notice it was around there throughout this entire time. So this tells us that now our master is not just mastered, but loud enough uh, to go to streaming platforms and you know to compete with other things on your playlist. So that's basically it. That's all I have on the mastering chain. If you were to take away these uh, metering plugins, all we really have are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plugins, uh, with the seventh one just being the limiter, which is basically a volume knob to tell us to make it louder. So again, let me show you a before and after with the gain matching. Take it to your mama. I don't need the drama. She can take care of you. Take it to your mama. I don't need the drama. She can take care of you. So we notice a bunch of different things. We have some more saturation, which is pleasing to the ear. We have more of those mid frequencies, which give us a little bit more perceived loudness and fullness to the mix. We have crispier vocals that pop over the mix. Uh, and you notice this all just between uh, these mastering plugins before and after. So there you have it guys. That is how I master my own music. Simple and easy process on how to do it. And it doesn't require a lot of plugins or a lot of knowledge to get it done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, then uh, make sure to hit that thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed because there are a lot of new tutorials coming soon. Make sure you got that notification bell. And I'm gonna leave a link to this mastering chain if you wanna download it off of my website. But thank you so much for supporting this channel. Really appreciate you guys. Good luck with your music. I hope this helps you get your music out there and ready for streaming platforms. And if you ever have any questions or want to see more content, check me out on Instagram and TikTok and um, keep making beats. <laughs>